Hi, I'm Kelly and I work for the Macular Society as an Advice and Services Administrator. My role includes working with the Advice and Information Service, working with the Befriending Team and also working alongside the Counselling Service. I also volunteer for the Macular Society and I help facilitate their parent support group, which meets over the telephone once a month. I was diagnosed over 30 years ago when I was eight with a genetic macular disease. My mum has it and my granny had it as well. I was initially diagnosed after I had gotten a black eye playing with my brother and I couldn't see very well out the other eye. I was taken to an optician and then I was referred to the eye pavilion in Edinburgh where I was diagnosed with best disease. This diagnosis had no impact on me at the time as I didn't understand I knew I had something wrong with my eyes, but it really didn't start to bother me until a couple of years ago. It was only when I started to notice a real difference that it did affect me. I just really struggled with my central vision. I was trying to learn to knit and I couldn't get the hang of it. And other things just became more difficult, like cooking, making tea and reading. I went back to the doctor and at that time I was having driving lessons. The doctor told me to stop the driving lessons as I wouldn't qualify for a driving license as my vision was so poor and I was registered as sight impaired that day. Before having my boys, I worked as cabin crew and I was a qualified dental nurse. And I knew that with my registration as sight impaired, I would never be able to return to these jobs as I wouldn't pass the medical that's required to carry out these jobs and I had to rethink my employment options. In my spare time, I'm also studying for a degree in psychology. This office that I have at home is like an Aladdin's cave of low vision aids. It's full of different glasses, magnifying glasses and electronic magnifiers just to help me read my university materials. I am also mum to three boys aged 10, 9 and 6. I decided to get the boys tested as I knew there was a 50-50 chance that they would have this genetic macular disease as well. My eldest has it and my youngest has it as well. My youngest boy was only 18 months old when he was diagnosed with best disease. My middle son has no visual signs of macular disease but we are in the process of genetic testing to make sure that he doesn't have the fault gene. I did find it difficult when the boys were diagnosed as I knew the future wouldn't be plain sailing for them when they got older as they would have to take the possibility of central sight loss into consideration when thinking about their career choices or even just learning to drive. I first heard of the Macular Society when I was given a leaflet at the hospital. I then went on to have a look at their website and become a member. I mainly joined as I'm interested in the research that's being carried out into macular disease. I have attended the society's conferences in the past and I also attended a patient's day for best disease where I was able to learn of the research that was going on and meet others with the same condition as me. I also met Dr Amanda Carr, a research scientist, and after that I got to donate my stem cells to her research project. I've always been happy that the Macular Society keeps its members up to date on research projects that they are involved in. As I have been told in the past by ophthalmology consultants that I shouldn't get my hopes up for research happening as some of these diseases were so rare that nobody would ever want to research them. Two years ago I started volunteering with the Macular Society facilitating the parents telephone support group. This group provides peer support for parents who have macular disease and also parents whose children have macular disease as well. This group is a great place for information on many things, including education and just general parenting information. This service was really helpful for me personally during lockdown as it gave me the opportunity to have a really good moan to other people about homeschooling. During lockdown, I also watched a few of the society's virtual clinics as they had one for my macular condition, but I also watched some others for general information about nutrition and research. In January this year, I started working for the Macular Society. The main part of my role is working on the advice and information service. 
I spent most of my time answering telephone calls on the advice line where no two days are the same. The calls that I take vary so much. I do a lot of referrals to other services like befriending, counselling and skills for seeing. Lots of the calls that I take are from people looking for advice on their treatments, their conditions and what to expect from their treatments or hospital appointments. A lot of the time the advice and information service are the first point of contact with the Macular Society. I love this part of my job. It gives me a lovely feeling not that I can offer advice and reassurance to the people that contact us. My favourite types of calls are when I can pass on information to others and tips that I use myself such as making watching television easier and little changes that can be made in the kitchen to make tasks easier, as I know firsthand how much these little tips and tricks can help. The befriending is also a lovely part of my job. I tend to do the befriending registrations, so I spend a lot of time calling people on the befriending waiting list. It's really nice calling up people to do the registrations, as a lot of them are lonely, and certainly at the beginning of the year due to isolation, I was often the only person they had spoke to that day or sometimes that week. Advice I would give to others with macular disease would be to be aware of what your normal vision is to you and the importance of checking your eyes in an Amsler grid. I would also advise that if you do notice changes in your normal vision that get it checked out either at a macular clinic or an optician. It's really important even if it's a small change in your vision.